Will you hit the space bar as soon as you sit down to bring that icon onto the first screen? There you go. That's fine. Leave it. <laughs> All right. It's one o'clock. Good afternoon, Central High School. This is your principal, Mr. Green, coming to you from our YouTube channel for our first ever, ever virtual orientation. We've been working out a few kinks over the last few days and hours. I hope that uh, this experience is, um, is good for you. We have a lot of information. As we go over the, ne the next few slides uh, here, please bear with us. Uh, if you can't hear us, let us know down in the chat. Also, we will have folks monitoring the chat. If you have questions, you can ask them throughout this uh, presentation today. So please feel free to engage with us in the chat experience so that we can answer your questions in real time. If there's something we don't know, we'll find an answer and we'll get that answer for you in your Google Classroom. Obviously, my name is Mr. Green, I'm your principal, and I'm really excited for us to start this school year. One of the things that you always hear me say is that there's two kinds of students. There's central students and those that wish they were central students. And so as we start this school year, just understand this, that there are kids all over this district that are uh, starting school in a number of different ways. But my message to you is that I would not rather start this school year as a student at any other school because you have the best class, the best senior class of any other high school in this district. You have the best teachers, the best counselors, the best APs, and the best principal. That's right. Uh, but no, seriously, guys, I'm proud of you. You're, you're our lead off group. Uh, you are a very special group of students, and you have the capacity to have a great senior year. Even though it's not starting in a textbook fashion, I have, it, I have every confidence, I have no doubt that you're going to start off this year great. So with all that said, we're going to keep moving on with our program uh, of what we have prepared. I'm going to call up our, our assistant principals so that they can introduce themselves to you. We have uh, one new person here that I can't wait for you to meet. But here come our assistant principals so they can introduce themselves to you. What's going on, Yellow Jackets? Uh, my name is Shay Founder. I'm the assistant principal uh, this year for the ninth graders, A through F, and then for the 10th graders. Hi, everyone. I'm Sean Edwards, and I'm so happy to be a Yellow Jacket. This year, I'm going to be in charge of testing and uh, advanced placement classes. Uh, I'm really excited. I hope to see you all soon. Hello, Yellow Jackets. Um, I am Ms. Beaumont. I am actually going to be the 12th grade assistant principal this year. And ninth grade, I'll be working with O through Z. Um, last name's O through Z. But I'm very excited. If you all need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to myself. Um, and hopefully we'll see you all sooner than later. Hey, Yellow Jackets, I'm Miss Britt. I will be the 11th grade AP as well as 9th grade G through N. Looking forward to meeting you guys and working with you all. Um, let's have a great year. Hey, Central, I'm Ben Robertson. This year I'm going to be the 11th grade counselor, and I've also got freshmen with the last name starting the letters G through N. Ms. Brown's not with us today, but she's going to have uh, the ninth grade with the last name starting with the letters A through F, as well as the 10th grade this year. Hi, I'm Ms. Poor. Um, I'm really excited to be working with you guys again, 12th grade, and also I'll be working with the ninth grade um, with students' last names O through C.
Up next are some very uh, important people here at Central High School. We're going to let them come up. Ms. Mack is our Youth Service Center coordinator. She splits time between Central and the Brown School. And obviously, you know that we have Ms. Jones, who's the best mental health counselor in all of JCPS. Uh, but here in the lobby with us today, we've got Ms. Lane and Dr. King. We'll let them come up and introduce themselves to you right now. Hello there, I am Adrienne Lane, the librarian, and I look forward to working with everyone this year and letting you know the library will be up and running. Hello, Yellow Jacket seniors. Uh, I am Dr. King. Of course, you know I am the magnet coordinator, and uh, I really miss you all. Also, I know I do not look like her, but we have a brand new athletic director. Mr. Bringhurst actually moved on. He's now principal in Nelson County, but this year we will welcome Samantha Pitts as our new athletic director. Uh, Ms. Pitts is the only female athletic director in the state, and she is also Central's first female athletic director. So we look forward to working with her. All righty, I'm back. So on your screen, you see the slide for the Library Media Center. What I want everyone to know is that even during NTI 2.0, we will be having curbside book checkout. So during this time, um, already up on the library website on this link, or you can Google Central High School Library Louisville, you'll be able to see a contact the librarian form. So through that, you can figure out, you can write me a question and request your books. And then soon I'll have a tutorial on how you can actually request and hold them yourselves. But more information is coming, books are there for you and I'm ready to check out and deliver. All right, uh, one thing that we really need to be aware of and mindful of as we move forward into virtual education this year is to check our Google Classroom um, daily, if not more than that. Um, you guys know this, but it's even more important virtually, not only because you get announcements from counselors and assistant principals, but it's how your teachers are gonna uh, give you assignments and materials for your, your work that you're doing in class as well. If you need the Google Classroom code, it's there at the bottom right on the screen. Dr. King's gonna come up next and talk about transition readiness. Hello, we have a video for you. Um, and hopefully it works. If not, then I will talk to you about transition readiness. Hello, seniors. This is your year. Congratulations. You're almost there. And most of you are transition ready. So congratulations again. <laughs> Give yourselves a hand. Uh, for those of you who are not yet um, transition ready, I will explain this chart to you so that you will know what it means to be transition ready and uh, what uh, tasks or uh, obstacles that you have to complete in order to become transition ready. Uh, so for high school, a student must earn not only their high school diploma, but they must meet one type of readiness measure. And those are academic or career. In addition, for our English language learners, any student who receives English learner uh, services must meet the criteria for English learner proficiency. Academic readiness can be determined uh, by the indicators that are on the chart uh, that's displayed on the screen. Uh, a student can meet academic readiness by obtaining a score that meets or exceeds one benchmark uh, displayed in section A and B. For example, uh, for academic readiness, if a student scores a 20 in English on the ACT and a 21 in math on the ACT, they have met academic readiness. Um, one benchmark from section A, uh, which is the quantitative reasoning, our natural sciences, and one from section B, uh, which is the written oral arts and humanities, our social and behavior sciences learning outcomes. Um, and 
And for KDE sections A and section B, uh, they are referred to as buckets. So just remember that academic readiness uh, means that you have met one indicator from bucket A and one from bucket B. And this can be a combination of those two. For example, you could get, um, you could meet or exceed the benchmark for English for bucket A. And then if you don't meet that for math, then you could take possibly the Coyote exam and uh, meet the math benchmark or exceed it for bucket B. For career readiness, there are five indicators. You have the end of program assessment. You can earn a valid certification for, for career pathway or magnet. Uh, there are six, you have six credit hours of CTE dual credit with a grade of C or higher. Uh, you can complete a uh, Kentucky Department of Education approved exceptional work experience and, um, or you could complete uh, an approved apprenticeship program. In order to qualify to meet any of those indicators, a student must complete or have completed a specified number of courses in your CTE pathway. And meet one of the career readiness benchmarks. I know that I've provided a lot of information in a short amount of time, uh, but relax. You can, you will uh, hear this throughout the school year. Also, you can ask your magnet teachers, your um, administrators, uh, AP or a counselor. Uh, you can also access this information on the Kentucky Department of Education's website, which is education.ky.gov. Or you can Google Kentucky Department of Education and follow the links uh, that are associated with CTE. Uh, I can't wait to until I can see you again face to face. But until then, uh, we're going to do this thing virtually and we're going to do it real good. Uh, so I look forward to uh, seeing you all virtually starting the 25th. And I hope that you and your families have had a uh, awesome um, break for the summer. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, I'm going to talk to you a little bit, a very little bit, about a new feature that the district is asking us to communicate to you, which is called Parent Place. It's a website uh, that they created as an extension of jcps.me. Um, so it's forward slash parent, jcps.me forward slash parent. Um, and there are actually two links in the comments below this video. So not the chat that we're currently doing, but the comments below, the public comments, there are two links. The first one will take you to a how-to video on how to create your account for Parent Place. The second is this actual page. You'll see a page that looks just like this screen. Um, and that is where you will go to actually fill out the forms that need to be filled out before school starts on the 25th. These are mandatory forms, so be sure your parents get on there and, and fill those out, all right? Ms. Poor is coming up next. Hello again. So I wanna to talk to you all just briefly about um, graduation requirements or credit requirements. I get a lot of questions every year of how many credits do I have to have in order to graduate? And some of you have already asked me that this summer and you've gotten my response that the short answer is 22, but the accurate answer is it's 22 of the right credits. So because of our schedule structure here at Central, many of you might already have 22 credits, but if you don't have the right credits, then that doesn't mean you can graduate right now. Um, you have to take English and math at the very minimum as a senior. All students have to do that all four years. I've gone through all of the senior transcripts and I am going to be contacting students if they are in any sort of credit trouble. So if you don't hear from me about your credits, then that means that you're good to go. You're right where you need to be. So um, if you have any questions about your credits, you can let me know. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you. Can go back. back. Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you about what the schedule is going to look like during NTI. 
because that's a question that a lot of you guys have. Um, I know that all of you know at this point, you've probably been able to look at your schedule on Infinite Campus and you know what classes you have. Um, just a quick note about your schedules because I've gotten a lot of emails today about can I change my schedule? How can I change my schedule? I don't want this class, etc. Um, in the coming days, Mr. Robertson and I are going to be putting out some information on the Google Classrooms on what to do if there's an error with your schedule and we need to make a change. Keep in mind, we're only going to be able to do schedule changes if there's an error. So just not liking the class that you're in or the teacher that you have is not a reason that we would be able to grant a schedule change. So just keep that in mind. So now on to what the day is going to look like during NTI. So we're going to still have an AB schedule just like we do normally during normal school days when we're in the building. But it's just going to look a little bit different. So on A days, you're going to have all four of your A day classes. But if you notice the times that are on the slide right now, um, those are the times that you're going to re be responsible for being in that class. So normally school starts at 740, but during NTI, your first block class is not going to start until 915. So starting at 915, you are going to be responsible for being wherever your first block teacher is, is requiring you to be, and they will post that on their Google Classroom. So whether that's a Google Meet or whatever kind of um, outline they have for the day. And then you can just kind of see the rest of the schedule. Your second block class is 1015 to 11. Um, then you've got a break in the day where it's lunch or office hours and office hours for the teachers. And then start back up at 1245 to 130 with your third block class. And then 145 to 230 would be your fourth block class. So every day you're responsible for going to all four classes. You need to make sure you're present because that's how your teachers are going to take attendance. And that's how you get credit for being at school and in class on those days. So we also have um, we also have what are called asynchronous days. So synchronous days are what I just talked about. Those are normal school days. But starting on the in the fourth week of school, we're going to have what's called an asynchronous day. So we have that week's schedule posted up for you. So that week on Monday, you're going to start with an A day, then B day the next, then A, then B, just like we normally do. But you'll notice that Friday the 18th is what's called an asynchronous day. So what that means is that it's still a school day and you still need to be available. It's not a free day, but you're not responsible for attending your classes. So that might be a day for make makeup, you know, to catch up with your teacher or ask questions. Um, we'll get into more of that later, but we just wanted you to know that that is coming down the pike starting um, in September and just didn't want you to be surprised when you saw that that language. So that's that that's what asynchronous days are. Now I'm going to hand it over to Ms. Britt. So to kind of piggyback off of what Ms. Poor said, on asynchronous days, you guys uh, will be required to fill out a form. Um, there's an example um, on the screen at this time for you to kind of see what that looks like. Whether it be an A day or B day, that will be listed. Um, you'll be responsible for choosing all four of your teachers that you would have normally during those days. Um, and then submitting the form um, at least by noon uh, on those asynchronous days. Uh, it will push out to you at 915, like your first period class. Um, and you'll have until noon to get that filled out. Uh, if you do not complete this form, uh, you will be marked uh, an excused absence. So um, as Ms. Poor said, we'll talk more about that uh, closer to the 18th. Next up is Mr. Founder, Chromebooks. There's been a lot of questions about device pickup, uh, and this is how we're going to do it. You, everybody needs to... Uh, request a device. They can request a device at jcps.me slash help. Once you go there, you mark I am a student. Once you have requested a device, they will send an email to us. We will have device pickup this Thursday and this Friday from nine to two. The only way you will get a device is if you have signed up through that website, jcps.me slash help. The route we're going to use is the same route we used uh, at the end of last year when we did uh, book drop off and stuff. You will enter in through Broadway, 12th and Broadway. You will drive 
by the track close to the school side and you will come out on Chestnut. Everybody has to stay in the car. We will come to you and be able to get devices. Along that time also, there will be a couple other drop-offs. We will have a band out and orchestra out to pick up equipments. Please just be looking on your teacher's Google Classrooms to make sure if you need to pick something up, that's when it'll be. Again, jcps.me slash help to request a device or a hotspot. And then this Thursday and this Friday from nine to two. Yeah. I haven't seen you since I don't know when. Actually, it's just a few minutes ago. But it's good to see y'all. And I want to talk to you for a little bit about device expectations. I'm sorry, NTI expectations. Uh, NTI 1.0, guys, was emergency learning. Nobody had ever done that before. No one had ever seen that before, at least in Jefferson County. And so we had to put a lot of things together on the fly. And so here we are now with NTI 2.0. And we want to cover some very clear expectations for you. Number one, be on time to class. You know the three R seniors, responsible, respectful, and right on time. So make sure you're on, on, on time to class. When you come to class, uh, your teachers will be using Google Meets. Make sure that you are muted. Make sure you're listening attentively every time. Act like you're at school. This is a big difference from NTI 1.0. For a lot of us, we were like, wow, look at this freedom. I get to uh, go to school from my bedroom or wherever the case may be. Make sure, guys, that you are uh, following the code of conduct just as though you're walking the halls here at school. Also, make sure your video is on so that we can see you. There, uh, th uh, the next one, I can't see it. No eating or drinking in class. So make sure, the guys, that while you are uh, uh, in class, that you're not, uh, you know, you don't have a big old meal right next to you left over. Try to take care of your breakfast, lunch, and dinner uh, outside of class time. This next one is really big. I want to talk about this using a consistent workspace. Some of you guys are very fortunate to have somewhere in your house that's a dedicated space where you can go and work or learn. Some of you guys don't have that kind of luxury. But what I want to encourage you to do is right now, between now and when school starts, think about what is going to be my consistent workspace. If that's your bedroom, then that's your bedroom. Just make it consistent and make sure that you are presentable, that you're following the dress code, that you're not half dressed, that you're, you know, that you look like you're in school, act like you're in school, um, and make sure that you're in a consistent workspace. I can't stress enough how important that is for you. Obviously, also, you want to raise your hand when it's your turn and then do your best and have fun. Guys, you just saw me coming here with a tuba. That was not planned. I literally thought about that about three minutes ago and I said, you know what? I'm going to have some fun because I can. So make sure that you're having fun and think about doing things the right way. All right. More expectations for you. Ms. Poor talked about this a little bit, but you will have a daily routine of instruction that starts at 9.15 every day. All right, so your school day starts at 9.15. You will receive 45 minutes of synchronous instruction. Synchronous means together, the whole class together. All right, so that's four times a day. So you go to class for 45 minutes starting at 9.15, and then at 10 o'clock you get a break. Then you come back for your second period class. Then you get a break. You come back for third period class. You get a break, then you come back for fourth period class. Make sure that you have your camera on and follow the school dress code. And then also you will have lessons with each teacher twice a week. Let's talk about what participation means. Participation means being present for synchronous class times, completing your agency board work within the prescribed time frame, reaching out to your teacher or administrator for help during intervention and office hours, and asking for any video or any missed lessons. All right, these are things that are gonna be on you to take care of. Your teachers, some of your teachers will have um, some work for you that's prescribed that has to be done within a week. For some teachers, it may be two weeks. For some, it may be, here's a, a, a big project that you get three weeks to complete. All right, it's really, it's gonna vary from teacher to teacher, but what is important is that you are present in the synchronous class for help. During the first go around, if you remember NTI 1.0, you only had to come in once a week, and that was it. This is not NTI 1.0. NTI 2.0 says you've got to come to class every day uh, on time for your instruction. Next. Um, here's another big change, what we had from NTI 1.0 versus this new iteration of NTI. 
During the first one, you had an incomplete. And if you didn't finish your work, then you had to the end of the semester to get it done. That will not be the case this time. We are in school. It just so happens to be online. So students, especially seniors, you don't want to mess around with this thing when it comes to your grades. There will be no incompletes. Do you do the work or do you not do the work? It's that simple. It's black and white. So there's no incompletes during NTI 2.0. Also, there are only two grading categories during NTI 2.0, mastery and progression. There is no engagement grade. So you have to show, you're earning your grade by how, how well you progress. Can you show progression, progression without showing up? No, you cannot show progression without showing up. If you only show one time within about a two week period, where's that other data point for the teacher to show that you have progressed? So it is, this is why you have to come every day because if you're not showing up every day, you are not progressing. So you have to show up every day so you can earn that progression piece. In addition to that students, that mastery grade is so important. That could be tests, that could be quizzes, that could be presentations, it could be any number of things. But what's important here is within the first, let's say the first six weeks of school, let's say you only have two tests in a class and you bomb one of those tests. Now your mastery grade is half of your grade. So it's really important that you show up every day, you don't miss school, you do all the work on time, because if with, with only two categories, there's less room for error. When there's three categories, there's a lot of room to manipulate. But with only two categories, there's only two only uh, two options here. That's not a central rule. That's not a Raymond Green rule. That's a JCPS rule. So every high school in JCPS is following the mastery progression binary. So you make sure you understand that very clearly. This is the biggest change, I think, from NTI 1.0 and 2.0. First go around, there were incompletes. You can turn in work as when, whenever you want. This time, that's not the case. No incompletes, and there's only two categories for grades. Now, here's the next one. If you choose not to participate, then the teacher may reach out to you and the family to document this. They may reach out. The second step will be for maybe a member of the communication team to reach out to you to provide assistance. The third step would be for myself, a counselor, or an assistant principal to reach out to the family. Uh, the last thing on this slide says that a Google Doc will track students missed time from synchronous learning. This document will be monitored by teachers, the communication team, and the administrators. So here's the thing. If we look on this document, we're keeping track of your attendance and your synchronous learning, and we look and see in 12 class meetings, you've only been to three. You don't have a lot of room to complain about your grade. Okay, so it's really important that you understand we're tracking you, we're tracking your attendance and your participation. Uh, and if you want to have a good grade during this NTI period, you got to show up to class and you got to do the work. We're here to help you, but this I can't say it strongly enough. It's not okay to skip school. Um, if we were in person, Central High School has one of the best attendance rates in the city, and I expect nothing less than that for NTI 2.0. Here's where I want to close out. I want to close out with a few affirmations as we move into distance learning. This is something that's new for a lot of us guys. I promise you, I didn't take any classes on how to do how to be a principal in online school. No teacher took a class on how to do this. And, and certainly for you guys, this is still new for you. So it's important that we affirm each other as we close out um, this orientation. Let's 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 close out with affirmations. I want you to think about this, guys. Do your best you can. How human of me to feel nervous about trying something new. I will give myself the same grace that I give others. I may not be able to control the situation, but I have control over my attitude. This is only temporary. I can do difficult things. I don't have to have it all figured out to move forward. I will make mistakes and that's okay. And as we kind of move forward, guys, we think all the time about, you know, what does it mean to be a leader of positive social change? We think about, you know, what does it mean? Uh, Y'all hear me say that all the time on the announcements every day, but this is the time to be that leader. This is the time to step into the uncomfortable situations uh, that may arise and then be that leader that says, no, what we need right here is some affirmations. What we need is to remind ourselves of the reality of the situation that we're in, that these are unprecedented times, but we're here for you. Central High School is a family. We are a unit and together, we're gonna be able to get through this, uh, through this pandemic and we're gonna be able to get through your senior year with a lot of success if we keep it positive, if we're leaders of positive social change, if we affirm each other, and if we consistently and continually lift each other up and not tear each other down, 
if we encourage one another, and if we use the best possible language that we can. Guys, I'm looking forward to this school year. You have no idea how bad I miss you. I can't wait to see you again. My hope and prayers that we'll be able to, to get back together at some point really soon, that we'll be able to hear the band play better than you just heard me play tuba, that uh, I'll be able to give you high fives. And uh, I, I just can't wait to see you all again. I miss you. If you have questions, continue to put them in the chat. We'll leave this video running for just a little while longer. Uh, and then if you have any questions, we'll answer them. Also, one last thing before we shut off this uh, orientation for today. Be on the lookout for uh, another family update this week. On Wednesday, I'm going to send out another reminder, another video, uh, and another letter giving explanations for how to pick things up on Thursday and Friday. So there will be another video this week. Normally, I try to do that once a week only on Sundays, but there will be a Wednesday video this week as well. I miss you. I can't wait to see you. Y'all stay safe. Wash your hands. And let's get ready for a great senior year. All right? Let's do it.